Hello and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is Teacher Onan de Guzman and our topic for today is Basic Terms in Algebra. This is for Grade 7, Quarter 2. After going through this tutorial video, you are expected to illustrate and differentiate related terms in algebra, such as a sub n, where n is a positive integer, constant and variables, literal coefficients and numerical coefficients, algebraic expressions, terms and polynomials, number of terms, degree of the term, and degree of the polynomial. Specifically, you will define the related terms in algebra, illustrate related terms in algebra, and differentiate related terms in algebra. Algebra is a branch of mathematics that uses symbols, usually letters of the alphabet. In order to solve problems, the word algebra originated in the word algebar, which is a part of the title of Muhammad ibn Musa al Khwarizmi's book, Al Kitab Jabar wa Al Mukebela, in which he introduced the fundamental algebraic methods and techniques for solving equations. The language of algebra is composed of two things. We have the numerals as well as the symbols or signs. Under the symbols or signs, we have operational signs, symbols of relationship, symbols of groupings, and letters or variables. If we are talking about numerals, this is composed of determiner of quantity. So, we have the following symbols, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. On the other hand, if we are talking about symbols or signs, the first part is the operational signs. We have the following symbols. We have plus or the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and we have the root or the square root. Well, for the symbols of relationship, we have the following symbols. Equal sign, not equal, we have less than or is less than. Then we have is greater than, is less than or equal to. And finally, we have greater than or equal to. Well, for the symbol of groupings, we have the parentheses, we have the braces, we have the bracket, and the last one is the bar or the vinculum. It signifies the division or quotient. The letters or variables is actually will represent unknown numbers. Example, we can use the alphabets A, B, C until X, Y, and Z. We may use small letters or big letters to represent unknown numbers. To study more about algebra, let's talk about some definition of terms. So the first one is a constant is any symbol that represents exactly one number in its replacement set. Say for instance, I have 5, 0, negative 8, or negative 1 half. Another term is a variable. A variable is a term or number with exact values. Say for instance, that is a, x, y or we can use the capital letter d another term is what we call algebraic expression or simply an expression is the result of combining numbers and variables with at least one mathematical operation so i have 2x y minus 1 so there is subtraction symbol between the expression 2xy and 1 Another example is 3 minus b. Next is 3x minus 2y plus 3. So we have here two symbols. We have subtraction and addition. And finally, we have r minus c. Whenever we talk about terms, this is a constant or a variable or constants and variables multiplied together. Example here, if we have constant only, 
then we have variable only or the combination of two as long as we will multiply them together. So 7 times x to the fourth power. So if we will put together a variable and the number, so we have actually the operation as multiplication. Next, exponent tell us how many times the base is used as factor. Example, we have 4 to the third power. So 3 is our exponent, while 4 is considered as the base. Notice that I can express 4 to the third power as 4 times 4 times 4. I express the base 4 3 times. But 4 times 4 times 4 is equal to 64. Next, if I have the expression 7x to the fourth power, take note that x to the fourth power is what we call literal coefficient, while 7 is what we call the numerical coefficient. So let's have illustrated example. Decide whether each quantity is constant or variable. So the number of months in a year. Actually, this is constant because we have fixed number of months in a year. Next, the number of people infected with coronavirus each week in your barangay. This is actually variable because the value is changing from time to time. Next, the number of primary colors. So this is actually constant because we have only three primary colors and that is constant. Number four, the water bill each month. So this is actually a variable because, okay, the water bill will change from time to time or monthly. And finally, the number of sides in an octagon. So this is a constant. There is a special type of algebraic expression, and we call that one as a polynomial. A polynomial is an algebraic expression where each term is a constant, a variable, or a product of a constant and variable. The variable as whole number, non-negative number, exponent. A polynomial can be a monomial, binomial, trinomial, or multinomial. Remember that algebraic expression is not a polynomial if, number one, the exponent of the variable is not a whole number. So meaning to say it must only be a whole number like 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. Next, the variable is inside the radical sign and the variable is in the denominator. So let's say 7x squared. So this is actually a polynomial while 8x raised to negative 2 is not a polynomial because the exponent is negative. Another example is 9 over x. So the variable is in the denominator. And another thing, if we will express x in exponential form, the exponent is actually a negative. So this is not a polynomial. Likewise, the square root of y is not a polynomial because this is inside the radical sign. By the way, the square root is what we call this one. This symbol is what we call the radical sign. By the way, algebraic expression can be classified according to the number of terms. Let's have example here. Classify each algebraic expression according to the number of its terms. Say for instance, I have negative 5ab squared c cubed. So, Okay, so this is only considered as one term because the operation between pi a b squared c squared is only multiplication. So this is actually a monomial. Okay, meaning to say we have one term. Also, I have 2x squared. So this is also a monomial. Another one, we have negative 3a squared x is also a monomial. To summarize, monomial is a polynomial with one term only. Let us consider negative x squared plus xy squared. Notice that there is a positive symbol that will separate this expression into two terms. I have the first term, we have negative x squared y, and the other one is xy squared. So this is actually a binomial. Another example, 
I have x plus 2y, and it is separated by the plus symbol, meaning to say, this is also a binomial. Next, we have negative a squared minus 4. Notice that I have here minus sign that will separate the two terms into 2. So this is actually a binomial. Notice that we will not consider this negative sign okay, to separate the terms because the sign of a squared is negative. So therefore, we can say that a binomial is a polynomial with two terms. Let us continue. If I have negative a squared minus 4ab plus 2b squared, Take note that I have minus sign and plus sign that, that will separate the expression into three terms. So therefore, we call this one as trinomial. Another example, I, if I have uh, x squared plus 2x minus 3, so this is again separated by plus and subtraction symbol. So therefore, okay, it will separate the algebraic expression into three terms. So this is trinomial. Next. I have xy plus 2x minus 3y, and it is actually, guys, separated into three terms because it is separated by plus and minus symbol. So this is trinomial. So therefore, trinomial is a polynomial with three terms. If the polynomial is in standard form, meaning to say the terms are arranged in the sending order of exponents, the first term is called the leading term, and the numerical coefficient of the leading term is called the leading coefficient. Let us consider this example 5x squared minus 7x plus 1. So the leading term is 5x squared. As you can see, our polynomial is arranged in descending order. The highest exponent is 2. Okay? Therefore, the leading term is 5x squared while the leading coefficient is pi. Let us now discuss the degree of polynomials. So the degree of a polynomial in a single variable is the highest exponent of the variable among the terms. For polynomials with more than one variable, the degree of the polynomial is the highest sum of the exponents of the variables among the terms. So let's have example 5x squared minus 8x plus 2. So if I'll consider the term 5x squared, so the degree is 2, while negative 8x has the degree of 1. Now, if we cannot see the exponent here for the variable x, it means the exponent is 1. We omit the exponent 1. Finally, if I have the term 2, the degree is 0. If we have only number or numbers only, it means that the degree is equal to 0. Let us now consider our sample number 2. If I have x squared y minus x squared y squared plus 3xy, take note that I have more than one variable. Now, in order to find the degree of the polynomial, so I'll consider first the first term, x squared y. I'll add the exponent. Take note that the exponents are 2 and 1 because the exponent of y is 1. So the degree of this term is equal to 3. While so the second term, negative x squared y squared, so the exponents are 2 plus 2, so the degree is equal to 4. While the term 3xy, so the exponent of x and y respectively is 1 and 1. So 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So therefore, it is actually in the fourth degree because this is the highest sum of the exponents. Let us now have example number 3. Negative 2x squared y cubed z. So again, so we have only one term, but we have many variables. Again, so add the exponents of 2, 3, and 1 because the exponent of z is equal to 1. So therefore, it is in the sixth degree. On our fourth example, we have only one term. And the exponent of our term is 7. 
So therefore, it is actually in the seventh degree. Another term for classifying algebraic expression is whether they are similar or dissimilar terms. Again, terms with the similar or same literal coefficients of the same degree are called similar terms, while the terms that have different literal coefficients and degree are called dissimilar terms. So, let's have this example. List the similar terms in each expression. So, so we have 3x plus 2 minus 5x. So, we consider 3x and negative 5x are actually similar terms because we have the same variable and the same degree. Another example, if I had 2x cubed minus 4x plus 5x squared plus 2 minus 3 or minus 2x cubed minus 7, so the similar terms are actually 2x cubed and negative 2x cubed. Again, they ha we have the same variable and the same degree. On the other hand, 2 and negative 7 are also considered as similar terms because they had the same degree of 0. Let's have another example. If I have 2x plus 4 minus 3x minus 1, so the similar terms are 2x and negative 3x because I had the same variable x and the same exponent. Similarly, I can say that 4 and negative 1 are similar terms because they have the same degree of 0. Next one, I have m squared minus 2m minus 3 plus 4 minus 4m squared minus 9. The similar terms are m squared and negative 4m squared because I have the same variable m and the same degree. Also, I have negative 2m and m because I have the same variable and the same degree. And last set is negative 3 and negative 9. So that ends our topic for today. So hopefully that you have learned well. So again, this is Teacher Onen de Guzman. Thank you and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified about my new videos.